I need to change that output. I'm actually using Mix Effect to control the ATEM, which is in a different room. Set that so I can see myself. That's pretty freaking cool. This is the table. That's all my views. That right there is what I am looking at. And my office is actually through that doorway. All right, now that I got all that out of the way. Hey everyone, welcome to a new segment on our channel called Late Night Builds. We get that to 11 in the morning. This guy is going to house everything we need to do a hybrid conference. We need to go to four different destinations and be able to change the feed going to those four destinations. We have four cameras, we have graphics, we have PowerPoints, confidence monitor feeds, behind the scenes feeds, bring in virtual participants, playback of videos and, and all those things. I wanna have all my monitors, my scopes, the switcher, all the ultra studios and whatever I decide to put in here and then I want the switcher, could be me, could be uh, Brian, will be looking at this rack with the scopes and monitors in it. First step is strip out anything and everything that's in here. Very well could run into issues with things and well, I guess you'll see me troubleshoot those issues and make compromises where I need to make them. So there's the rack. First things first, I am going to work from the top down. Uh, and I kind of wrote over here on the board what I want. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a scope. Let's go pull that out of our studio. Yes, even over here at A to Z, we try to save money where we can, even though it doesn't look like it. Nice and thin. All right, stole that. It's going right up top there. Next step, uh, I plan to put, I think I left four U's for the monitor. Perfect. Thought about just making one of these a multi-view and the other one the program view, as a lot of people do with these, but I didn't really like how small it was. The fact that these are scopes can be helpful because we deal with a lot of cameras. We do color match things and is that what we're gonna go with? I don't really like that. If I offset this, a bigger place to write. Now I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna center it for looks. All right. Just because I want to be able to cable manage a little bit nicer, I am putting this rack with holes so I can slot out cables. It's not perfect, doesn't need to be perfect. No one's gonna see it except me and everyone watching this video. Don't freak out. That's not really going anywhere. All right, what's next? 20 by 20 SDI router. Got a bunch of ins and outs on the back here. I am running an A10 Mini Extreme ISO in this. It only has two outputs. I said at the beginning of the video, I need four uh, individual outputs at a minimum. That's at a minimum because I have four destinations that I'm going to. That's why I have this guy in here. It is going to basically act somewhat as a sub switch, even though there's what's called a glitch when you use a smart video hub 20 by 20 or 40 by 40. I'm just gonna get around the glitch by kind of running it through a different sort of ATEM product or maybe like a full size uh, decimator, an MDHX. Starting to look like a rack though. That's for sure. The fun part actually comes on the back side of the rack where we get to wire everything and kind of do all the little hacks and tricks to make it all work. The drawer that I actually had for this isn't here yet. So as a placeholder, putting in this drawer. The drawer is what the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO will be Velcroed to, mounted to. I have no inside knowledge on it, but if I was a betting man, I would say Blackmagic's gonna come out with a replacement to the HD Studio, which I've said in plenty of videos before. That's the reason I didn't buy a 2ME just to do this conference, just to have it on hand, because I really do feel like something better and newer is coming out. This is a patch panel. Trip light power strip here, outlets on the front and outlets on the back here. This is my go-to power strip for all of my racks because it's super convenient. I think it's only 15 amps though, so for this rack, that's definitely plenty. Well, that's the front of this rack. We have a drawer. 
We have power strip, SDI, 20x20 router. I feel like we're already getting heavy. Somewhat disappointing. All right, so the nice thing about this is I have all this space that I can put shelves and things like that in here. Hey, that's actually kind of useful. Used gear comes with a nice little light. All right, so this shelf that I am currently putting in here, uh, the plan is for this to be for network stuff. All the ports on the back of the SDI router are super small, or sorry, they're all close together, so you need an SDI screwdriver to really get things in and out. This patch panel allows me to spread out certain ports and makes it a little cleaner. And I set it up this way so I can have one side that says inputs and one side that says outputs, and I'll draw a line or something, so. Okay, so we have the patch panels in. We have things wired in the back. I'm using these red cables here for the patch panel. I'm using green cables here for the SDI. This is something I've learned after building a bunch of these different types of racks is actually color coding the cables, having enough cables and the right size is super important. I have a power strip in here. I have a drawer. We're looking good. Next step, I think, is I'm going to install some of these Black Magic bi-directional SDI HDMI 3G converters. That's a lot. These guys right here. And what they are going to do is they are going to allow me to have camera control over SDI. That's why I'm using these. I also need these to convert to and from the SDI router to an HDMI switcher. Eight of these are for the inputs. Two of them are for the outputs of the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. That's what I'm thinking there. I can get in. How do we feel about that? Is that good? Do I need right angles on all these? I think I'll be okay. So, gotta use all these guys up. But anyway, just so you guys can see here, I am Velcroing these two sides here. It'll go up against there and nothing will move. See, they're not perfectly sized or anything. And so the idea is that this is the actual SDI input. It gets through the router, it'll come out, it'll go into this guy here, and then for camera control, I can plug in to this port or whatever port I need to. Luckily, I will have a day to kind of test this thing out. If these things overheat, I will rip it out and redo it in a way that is more spread out. But this looks really cool, one, two, three. Four. All right, right there is my eight inputs that will HDMI into the A10 Mini Extreme. Next step, outputs. This is a deck link in an enclosure. I'm thinking, do I either... Wow, look at that fit. It's like I thought this through. Well, that might work. That'll be cool, right? If I could fit all that in here. All right, let's give it a shot. I'm down, why not? The fan will be overhanging off the back of this shelf here. Call that a plus. At least it'll get some airflow. Ah, uh, it's a nice snug fit, which I like. Wow, totally at an angle. Screwed that one up a little bit. I'm gonna go for it. I don't care at this point. I have less and less time to think about this, so I'm just gonna go for it. I really hope that's gonna fit in there. I did recess everything a little bit so that these cables would fit with the back on. So I'm really hoping that's going to be the case. And now you guys are starting to realize why I wanted a 20 by 20 router because I'm actually gonna get close to using up most of the ports on this guy. Look at that. That's starting to look clean. That's actually not bad. That looks better than I thought it was going to look. Now, uh, power. This USB guy right here. Mount that, should I mount like this? Nah, screw it, mount like that. I can stack them if I need to. Also, I like these anchor ones because I've also had pretty good luck with them. This is going to go behind 
then I want it to come through, and that's the idea. It's starting to come together. It's starting to look like the back of a real rack here. Network switch. I don't need 16 ports at all, but if I want to wire together like six computers on site, I don't want to be short. Oh yeah. Perfect, and then I will just Velcro a router, a little guy that I have. SDI is done, power is mostly done, network cable is started. I would have loved to finish this all in one take, but I had to leave and I have to leave now. It's messy. We'll continue here in a second. So this guy's gonna go in the rack, it's gonna get put right on to this shelf right here, probably right on the front. Help if this power strip was on. All right, we have lights, things are turning on. Yeah, this guy's kinda heavy. Goes in there, USB-C hub, in there. Now my laptop should be connected. Let me run an HDMI cable so you can see what is on this guy here. All right, so I have my ATEM control. Great, let's see if I can get my video hub set up. Look at that, we can see the video hub, love it. Yep, I have access to everything. Steal my date, smart view setup. Let's see if I connect. All right, it sees them. All right, I have control, so that's good. Cool, so in order for me to change what these uh, are doing scope wise, I'll have to use the smart view setup or use companion because companion has shortcuts to change what those do. Maybe I'm just an idiot and I plugged it into the SDI output on the back of the scope and not the input because that's exactly what I did. See, we got a signal now because I just plugged it into the wrong port. I do it too. Outputs. Output one is my multi view. Output two, let's make program. There we go. So I can actually test ProPresenter. Cool, so I'm gonna take this USB-C cable. In the back of this rack from earlier, you remember I had a deck link card. I'm going to plug this USB-C cable into the back of that deck link card. First thing you do, restart ProPresenter because I just plugged in something new and ProPresenter needs everything connected when it boots up in order to recognize it. Fine, I'll restart. Let's go ahead and just plug in another monitor. Yeah, you can see that. All right, I have an output. And I can change that output to be source 19 take. And that's how you switches. And that was a nice clean switch. I'm pretty sure that was a nice clean switch because they're the same frame rate and they're in sync. Sorry about the quality, but I will not stop because I need to get this done. I have now set up a deck link, so there's five ports on the back. One of them is a reference in. The other four ports are assignable. You can assign it to be a single output, so two ports to be a single output, one to be a fill, and one to be a key. Okay, so I've assigned deck link one to be a key and a fill, which is actually ports one and three. They do like an odd even thing. And then I assigned deck links ports two and four to be separate. That way I can actually send two separate signals to those ports. Total of three, technically four, but three different outputs. I'm gonna go configure screens. I have an audience. I'm gonna say this is going to be graphics. It's going to be playback. And then I actually wanna do a last one, technically four. And I want this to be clock. Oh yeah. Well, that works. 4.23 in the morning. We got a working rack here. We have this rack with the scopes. We got the monitor. We got the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. We got the 20 by 20 video hub. We got a power strip. We got 10 Blackmagic 3G converters in the back. We have a deck link card with uh, an enclosure. We have uh, USB distribution, we have a network switch, we have a lot going on here, and this setup is basically the newest, greatest Blackmagic switcher case that I can build at this moment with what I have. We can do our super sources, we can do everything we need for our hybrid conference, we can do both sets of cameras via SDI. You can see we can completely control that one camera behind me same thing, we can completely control 
One of the coolest things we're doing, in my opinion here, is with the deck link card, we're doing basically our own multi-view slash stage view, which allows us to not have to use all eight bottom boxes here for our multi-view. I can have the records, the audio, and I can have our stream status all down here, and I can still see my playback and my graphics. So if I create a look real quick, and I already created some macros, I can throw that guy up. I'm gonna go over here to upstream key one. I'm gonna select camera one, and then I can take that on screen. I have another one set up to be a lower third. And so all of a sudden we have, you know, a moving background, we have a box in there, we have a lower third, and we haven't used any of the media players. We haven't even used the super source yet. Technically, you can do all of this on an A10 Mini Pro, but now we also have a super source. We can be jumping back and forth between a one box with a moving background. We can cut over to here. I could technically put a moving background over here as well. I could use another port on the deck link. I could use a different input device. So I have lots of options there. Am I limited? Yes. Could I use a 2ME to do all of this and not have to go through the video hub and the uh, A10 Mini Extreme ISO? Yes. But the A10 Mini Extreme ISO will give me eight ISO records plus a program feed. If I was to do this with the 2ME, I would need nine Hyperdex. Boom, cost went straight up. SDI, so I don't need any of these converter boxes. That's great, except I still need them to convert to HDMI and things like that because my laptops would be HDMI. Maybe some of my cameras, like my pocket cinemas, would be HDMI, so still would need a couple converters there. I would still need a streaming encoder, so I still need something to, so I need a web presenter now to get it to stream to Vimeo, which is where I'm going. Yeah, I mean, it just does it all in one. I have all my displays here, so it, it keeps it nice. Anyway, this is the setup. I'm up 4.30 a.m. in the morning. We have a working system. Now all we need to do is actually finish building out our show. Uh, maybe I'll get the audio board out and I'll get all the cameras and all the cables and I'll plug everything up just like we're gonna do it on site for a last minute full run through test of all the gear working together. I'll pack it all up, put it in the truck and we'll go do our conference. I still need to set up a stream deck in here. I am not going to put a computer in the rack. I will just use a single computer for control. Maybe I also have that network switch uh, able to do mix effects. We'll see if I wanna add that in here. Very, very happy with this rack. And it packs up rather quickly. I'm excited and I'm tired, so. I'm gonna go home, do some laundry, come back, do more stuff. Thanks.